Joining us right now, we have Lincoln Child on the line with us. Uh, Lincoln, along with Douglas Preston, this is a Preston and Child book. It's called The Lost Island, a Gideon Crew novel. Lincoln, good morning. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Now, how long have you known Douglas? Oh, God, too long. (laughs) Actually, I've known him since, uh, it really dates me, but I've known him since uh, the mid-80s. Okay. And uh, who, who had the idea to work together? Uh, well, I did, actually. I, I, I was an editor at St. Martin's Press, and I, as an editor, you always need product. And so I was a huge fan of the American Museum of Natural History in New York. And I, 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 I looked around for someone to write a, uh, a backstage tour of the museum, which is probably the strangest building in the world. I mean, this is where Indiana Jones hangs his piss helmet when he's not out robbing tombs. And I found this guy, Doug Preston, who worked for the museum and wrote for their magazine, and I took him to lunch to the Russian Tea Room and said, how about writing a book about the museum? And he did, called Dinosaurs in the Attic, which is still for sale. Um, and afterwards... Oh, sorry. No problem. Afterwards, uh, we just sort of got talking about this, what an amazing museum and building this was, probably the, the scariest building in the world, and we decided... It would be a perfect place to stage a thriller, and that became our first novel, Relic. Um, and the rest, as they say, is, is history. The rest is history. Now, I, I was curious about how you uh, collaborate on these books, what, what the, the process is. Is it one of the, you know, you write chapter one, I'll write chapter two. I would assume it's not that. <laughs> you, you're, you're right to not assume that, although a lot of people do assume that, because that would be a disaster, because, you know, I mean, I may want to kill off... Uh, Hamlet in, in chapter one, he didn't want to keep him around for a graveyard scene in chapter 30. <laughs> you know, uh, um, what happens is we, we sit down and we plot out the, the, the next 10 or 12 chapters, basically. And then, you know, we usually have one of us who, who champions a certain book. You know, he'll, Doug may champion, for example, The Lost Island that we're talking about today. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll go over the, the chapters. He'll write the majority of them. And then I'll come back and I'll look look them over and I'll make suggestions which will irritate him, unbelievably, you know. But 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 uh, he'll, he'll he'll usually take my advice and then I'll rewrite them myself. So basically, we get all four hands on on every on every word. And you know, Doug and I write solo books as well as joint books, and and um, we've learned the hard way that even though writing your own book just by yourself is incredibly Fulfilling, you know, you, nobody else can claim credit for it. Having an, a co-author is is really a big help because otherwise you're like walking this this lone road by yourself, and every chapter is like a fork in the road, and you're never quite sure if you're making the right decision. You know, of course, the downside is you got to split the money. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking to Lincoln Child this morning, who, along with Douglas Preston, uh, are out with the book The Lost Island. This is a Gideon Crew novel. Can you explain Gideon to listeners that, that maybe haven't gotten into the series yet? Yes, Gideon is our newer character, uh, series character. Um, our special agent Pendergast of the, of the FBI is our bread and butter character, but we decided to expand three books ago into somebody who's younger, who's more edgy, uh, Gideon is kind of a rake. He's, as the English say, a bit of a lad with the ladies. He uh, is an ex-art thief, and he also has a uh, a medical condition that will kill him in less than a year. And uh, the books about him are, are spaced one month apart. Um, and he's, you know, he's, we've had a lot of fun with him because Pender, Agent Pendergast is kind of a, a very, he's a, very dark gothic character and Gideon is kind of a uh, you know he's 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 a jokester a trickster and it's been a lot of fun for us to have someone like like him who can be a, a straight ahead action hero but an action hero with a head on his shoulders so uh, d- does his personality uh, depict either you or Doug <laughs> maybe Doug or I as 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 the two of us merged into some some really good looking uh, stud, you know, which <laughs> neither one of us is, you know, in another life, may might have been, you know, it's, 
it's just total wish fulfillment, and and uh, as an author, that's one thing you can indulge in. Right. So he's given an assignment. He has to steal a page out of a priceless book, but then discovers a treasure map. But I'm told it's no ordinary treasure map either. Yes, exactly. Um, uh, there's a there's an illuminated manuscript, you know, which is one of those big books which every page is is so carefully painted by a monk in by monks in a monastery um, called the Book of Kells, which is probably Ireland's greatest masterpiece. And in our story, we have a thing on display in the Morgan Library in New York, um, and he is tasked with stealing a single page. Um, specific page from, this, from the Book of Kells. And, and Gideon, who used to be an, uh, I, I said, an art thief, says, oh, is this, this is going to be a, a, a challenge, but, but how tough can it possibly be? And so he wanders into the Morgan Library and looks around, and he, he sees first one, um, you know, uh, a safety precaution, and then another one, and another one, and another one, and he realizes, finally, my God, this is not... This cannot be stolen. I cannot do this. I've got to get somebody else to steal it for me. So in a brilliant, I can say it's brilliant because it wasn't my idea. It was Doug Preston's idea. In a brilliant solution, he manages to get someone else to steal it for him using only SPF 21, I think it was, sunblock, believe it or not. And... Um, after this incredible tour de force, um, he shows up at his boss's office, this kind of shadowy figure who gives him these uh, these assignments um, with the page, and his name is Eli Glynn, and Glynn, no sooner than he gets a page of this, of this priceless, one-of-a-kind manuscript, and he puts it in this solvent, which dissolves all the paint off of the page, and Gideon is beside himself with anger. Not only did he work really hard to steal this page, but it's from a, a priceless, irreplaceable manuscript. And, and Eli Glynn says, yes, I know that, but underneath is something even more priceless. And it turns out to be, as you said, a treasure map, an old treasure map made by the monks from that abbey, um, leading to a very, very unusual treasure. Not just gold, or diamonds, um, but something that could change the world. And that is where the story basically has its jumping off spot. Wow. <laughs> That's all I got is wow. So yeah, it's an amazing read. This is part of our Summer Beach Read series. It's called The Lost Islands. And uh, it is now in this book, uh, Gideon and uh, who is who's the, the, the person he teams up with? Is it uh, Amy? Amy is the name she's given in the book, yes. Yeah. They uh, they tend to eat some interesting things, don't they? <laughs> yes, they do. Um, it's funny, you know, we, we were really hard-pressed to make sure that Amy was not just a tag-along, but that she was really, in some ways, a more powerful and, and strong and interesting character uh, as Gideon, we didn't want us to have her like be like a female sidekick. We wanted her to be, in some ways, someone that, that Gideon could admire, could resent, because she's a better boatsman, she's a better fighter, she's, hmm. um, you know, more, I wouldn't say more intelligent, but she's more skilled in a lot of physical arts, you know, rock climbing, and, uh, but all that perfection conceals a very deep secret i like amy away, but um <laughs> i'm sorry i said i like amy yeah case in case. i like strong much. female characters in novels as, as do we you know it's it's such a cliche to have have the the bond girl in, in a book or a movie we'd work very hard to make sure that we don't do that kind of thing that, that no uh, damsel in distress over here right <laughs> we want our books to be interesting to, to, to the women, too. Why shouldn't they enjoy the books as much as the men do? Here, here. Well, Lincoln, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, Lincoln Child and Douglas Preston. Now, the books are Preston and Child, so why did he get top billing? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a very sore spot with me. I'm sorry you brought that up. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. But I waited the, till the end. Yeah. At, the, at, the, at the time, he had... Uh, 
written a couple of nonfiction books, and so you know they thought that uh, I guess his name ought to go first. But you know, back then, in in in, in prehistory, in the mid '80s, they didn't like the idea of two people writing a novel together. Somehow they thought it would be a downer and a put off, and people wouldn't buy the book. So they actually considered giving us a pseudonym rather than you know, Preston and Child, and wow. so even though my name comes second, although I do all the work, and, and you know, I'm, I'm the brains of the outfit, and I'm much better looking than Doug Preston is, uh, and everything else. And you're the only one that returned our calls. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. Yes. I'm, kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm kidding about that, by the way. But um, I'd much rather be second on the bill than be, you know, a pseudonym hiding behind, like, Preston Child or, or Lincoln Douglas or something like that. Right. So, uh, well, th- Lincoln, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, the book is in all the bookstores now. And you, what is your website? It's www.prestonchild.com. All right. And the book is The Lost Island.